Power PC, Power R6000, Birds of Feather session. Uh, okay, does anyone have anything to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I have a list of things that we did uh, uh, the last year. Uh, there's not much we can talk about that's going to happen in the near future. But, well, maybe a little. Uh, we're going to have a, a few more cleanups, uh, but I'll talk about that. Um, uh, last year we mostly, uh, well, we finished up Power9, uh, some optimization for Power9, uh, some dep deprecated targets were removed, or some not even deprecated targets, but targets that really no one used anymore, so you can just remove them. Um, no, 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 da Darwin is a target. Darwin is an OS. It's different. Uh, hang on. Let me find my notes. There we go. Okay. So the light isn't great for <laughs> reading this. Uh, uh, okay. The uh, the first big thing, really important thing for Power, for a port that happened, uh, uh, was the thing that Aaron did. Where is Aaron? There is Aaron. Like uh, the the optimis uh, you had to talk about it yesterday. Is optimizations for the string and memory functions, str star and mem star, and they really help performance ridiculously much, which might be because or uh, problems in our architecture or something, or micro-architecture, I don't know, but they help really, really much. Maybe other architectures should also try to do it. It's, maybe it's not. You're solving a problem, really? Just, well, not solving a hardware problem, I mean. Uh, uh, the, the next one, uh, and um, uh, uh, these are the uh, people who committed to GCC uh, at least two patches like last year. Right? So I've got uh, Alan Modra as well, who isn't here because he's way too far away. <laughs> uh, he is uh, the, the, the Bingy Tales maintainer, one of the Bingy Tales maintainers, and the maintainer for R6000, of course. And But he also did a lot of GCC patches last year, which is... Like, where, where did he get time for to do that, right? And the, there's some quite important patches, actually. Uh, uh, like, he uh, he removed uh, minus M any, uh, which we... Yes, yes. <laughs> which, uh, that's, a, uh, that's a flag to the, to the assembler, uh, uh, which means, like, uh, uh, the instructions we generate can be from uh, any ISA variant. So, <coughs> uh, so if so, if you're compiling for Power Nine, whatever, it can uh, uh, we we could actually generate instructions for any weird uh, embedded variant or anything. It's uh, and some sometimes that actually was a problem. Problem, and there are actually some uh, some some mnemonics that are uh, the same for different architects different architecture variants. It's. But our server processes are yeah, it disable it disables a few. Yeah. Yeah. We did that on purpose. We yeah, sorted exactly. them that way. But uh, uh, but 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 usually it's a compiler bug if it generates an instru instruction for the for for a different architecture, yeah. like uh, 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 and it's compiler bugs that we don't easily notice. Like if you uh, compile for a big Endian 64-bit power PC. The default target is power four. If it generates like power seven, power eight instructions, we're not going to notice because what we're actually running on is newer hardware anyway. But that still means that the compiler generates wrong code. Yeah. Uh, what uh, what Alan also that? Yeah. I yeah, you notice. Yeah, but before be before I get bug report from you, it's like. A week later or something, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, you have a testing problem. 
Yes. Uh, another thing Alan did was uh, he, uh, he updated the mo uh, uh, one of the big things he did, right? He updated the move cost like late last year, I think, early this year. I'm not sure what. So we have new, yeah, no, late, late last year. Was, yeah. So we have new register classes and stuff. And we, we, one thing I am really happy about is he made the uh, uh, BDZ, BDN set instructions pretty much rocket proof, I wrote. Wow. Yeah. Uh, 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 the, uh, the problem with those is uh, uh, the jump instructions, which means that they cannot have any output reloads. And they do use uh, a register, and it's a register that cannot always be allocated. So then you need output reload on it, but you cannot have an output reload, so it has all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, so, uh, so we still have that. In theory, it still does not always work. But in practice, it, it will always work now. And, and, and we always depended on that, right? That you do get the count register allocated. And it did work almost all of the time. Uh, 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 so, so, so maybe a handful of bugs every year, but now it's like reduced by a factor of a thousand or whatever. So we're not going to get any bugs anymore. Yes. And then there's Bill, and Bill did all, all ABI stuff and the uh, uh, swap thing for Power Eight. That's that's most patches that we see in upstream GCC for last year. Uh, uh, Power 8 swap thing. Do we have a bug for that right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I don't think it's a bug. Well, it's where the bug happens, right? So yeah, yeah. It happens in that pass. So. Code, code looks all right to me. I just don't think it's a bug. I think you just made it up. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, what, what it does is uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you have a factor and uh, a factor has two 64 bit halves, Right, because it's 128 bit thing. Every factor is a 128 bit thing because we don't do all the factors anymore. Yes. Uh, I have an instruction that does the same thing on both halves. Like you have an add instruction that just does two parallel adds or whatever. Uh, you don't have to do a swap before it and a swap after it, and you don't have to do anything. And that's what that pass does. That actually helps a lot. Except when, when it has a bug, but maybe it doesn't. I, I don't know. Uh, the, you know the PR I'm talking about. I do. It has a different result at O0 and at O2. So something is wrong anyway. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 Bill Sawyer did. Uh, I pronounced that correctly, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, he did a really great, great, great patch that makes me really happy. Two really great patches that made me. Well, and some to fix it up, but uh, uh, to split R6000.c into three pieces. So now we have R6000.c, of course, R6000.log.c, which has all prolog and plug stuff in it, uh, and R6000.call.c, which has everything for function calls, but also all, uh, all built-ins. So. Uh, the, the reason why this, this is so nice is that um, uh, if you build GCC, if you bootstrap GCC, then building R6000.c was probably the longest, the longest one, it's, or close to it anyway. Oh, it, it was a bottleneck. It's uh, and now, uh, now neither of those, neither of those three, is in the top five anymore. So we're safe for a while anyway. So. Well, of course, there's, there still is R6000.md, which is a problem for everyone that the MD files are. Uh, uh, the MD files, they include other files, uh, yes, but they take. They take. Like there's multiple ones, there's only one. Yes, so yes. Just count yes, they just uh, textually include the rest. So, what to so do there about it? Files yeah. And it's co it's going to be a little bit better if we can uh, uh, make sketch scheduling models really separate. They aren't actually separate. They are just mushed into one big one. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, is it, uh, that's going to be it's going to be a little bit better if we can change that. But uh, uh, the uh, the big problems uh, in the MD files are elsewhere. I'm not sure. Like uh, 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 Henry Henry uh, recognizer, right? Uh, and the and the uh, engineer is also bad. Uh, uh, next, uh, uh, the split uh, IS six thousand makes the Git blame hard to track uh, the Git log. Is it? Uh, is it hard to check the Git log? You say? Yeah. Mm. Why? Why is that? What is hard to uh, check? Uh, uh, it will be in. Uh, I I check the file uh, history. Um, oh, you 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 mean um, uh, after the new file is created, there will be all the. Oh right! Yes, 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 yes. I don't know what so. to do about it. <laughs> Right, so so you just put options to get yeah. to do it. Okay, that might work. Yeah. Right, right. So for like uh, the copy detection flags, they call it something like it. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, did I delete people here? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so, so Karlov did a lot of work on uh, built-ins, which is a lovely job. I wouldn't want to do it, I mean. So I'm really happy that he does a great job of it. Uh, Kelvin Nielsen did the same thing, a lot of built-ins. Yeah. Is, that, is that pretty much done now? Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. We need to redesign how it's done. Yeah. Yes, yes, I, w I was going to talk about that. Uh, the way we generate built-ins right now is pretty, pretty much not nice. And for, an, uh, uh, for the number of different kinds of built-ins we have, uh, or macros are quadratic in number of lines in, in that number, how many types we have, because we've got the undev, everything, and everything. Uh, and and part of the problem is the overload macro overload built-ins in R six thousand hyphen C. Yeah, you, know, you know when when I did the initial stuff, it was always meant to let's go back and do it later. It should yeah. be time to do it later and come up with a, a better scheme. But, but yeah, the problem really is and uh, the where the problem starts is that you uh, you did it all in the CP, CP preprocessor, which is a great idea to start with, but. Uh, we probably just need some generated code now, um, and then we then we could reduce all of the re repetitive stuff. Yeah, and it, it occurs to me that maybe we want to think about having an option that eliminates all the scheduler files we don't care about. So on little Indian Linux, where we don't have the well, big Indian, you know, I'm just thinking that's an option off the top of my head. You well, know, and again, the same thing for built-ins, but again, right now it's... It, there are two problems with the scheduler files. They simply take up space, like we have some uh, 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 com combined one, uh, compiled one that are like binary, like a megabyte or something, which is which is quite quite big, even on modern systems. It's quite big for something you never ever use, uh, and I mean never ever. Like how many people build for Power Three, right? It's not that Power Three is so big. big. It's R64 that is so big. Is does anyone know what the R64 is? Yeah, yeah, you, you guys know, you guys know, <laughs> right. But, but it does mean that we can probably uh, delete at least the scheduling model for, for it. You can still generate code for it uh, just fine, right? But it, it won't run very fast anymore. Uh, just, sure no just a few percent slower, a few percent slower than not really at all. Is not not so bad. I'd be surprised if anybody blames the R sixty four. Yeah, but that, but there's no real reason to uh, to delete it. No. So, 
Yeah, it's so big that that that's uh, the, the other problem with the schedulers is that uh, uh, they actually take up uh, a compilation time as well. If you compile something, then the unused schedulers still take up resources. It's it's not like uh, uh, the generated code actually says like yeah we only choose like power nine whatever and we use the tables for that and everything is fine. It actually still uses a little not not completely but a little bit of space. So it would be nice to get rid of that, but that's a generic problem. It's not power PC. So secret. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, an area that needs to be reworked. Let me Sorry, ask. I can't hear you. Uh, as you already mentioned, an area that needs to be reworked. Let me ask you about the dash m uh, options. Uh -huh. um, we now have this open source ISA, uh, and there is an, an implementation of, uh, or at least a partial implementation of a processor um, uh, that. It's been created with a possibility of um, adding extra dash M options. Are there any plans to refactor them in order to provide? Well, well more? Uh, uh, most minus M options, minus M, M means machine, machine specific yeah. option. And, uh, 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 most of them uh, uh, we cannot really remove because probably some, uh, some product use them. So uh, we actually have quite a few that uh, that are deprecated in the .opt file r6000 .opt. It says most of us like that that they're deprecated. Uh, they don't they don't do anything. Okay. Ex except uh, no f the minus m no something right? Uh, it throws an error then or the other way around. Whichever is the default, and it's default means always in this case, right? Okay, so maybe let me ask this differently. Do you think this, the way it's implemented right now in GCC, it would be possible to add extra options there? What do you mean extra options? We have a file full of options. Yeah. Hundreds of them. But, uh, for example, this new processor, uh, as far as I understand, it may not implement all the features that, uh, let's say, Power9 has right now. So... Okay, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> so that's not entirely true. Um, there are levels of uh, compatibility that are required, and uh, currently, um, you know, that's, that's going to be a pretty high bar to, to go too low below that. And we already have additional, we already have existing options that will cover that. For example, if you want to turn off all of the vector code, we already have a dash M option that allows you to do that. Just yeah. dash M no altivec. So for the for the you know, we, we don't allow people to go in and say, I'm going to do an arbitrary subset of power nine because we that's going to fragment them. the community too much. Yeah. Uh, so we, we have I believe about four different levels, three of them that apply to Linux. And then there's a fourth one for AIX support that, that we really don't care about in this community. Um, so uh, there, there shouldn't be a need for more options to support what's been done there so far. But we'll keep an eye on that in the future as we, do, as we donate future processors uh, to OpenISA in the future. So, yeah. uh, 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 among, amongst the flags that uh, you could always use which disable features is uh, soft float, which disables hard float. Uh, no alt effect, like you say. No, no VSX actually works. Always works. It does allow alt effect, but not all the other factor registers. Uh, no TM, I think we have. Dash M, no HTM. H HTM, right, right. Uh, I believe HTM is excluded from the Open Power ISA, though. Yeah, so, prob so prob that's, probably. So that's something that we yeah. don't require anybody to do. So. Yeah, but if they have a built-in for it. If they use the built-ins for it, they probably generate code for it by now. You, you, oh, it would you get an error without okay. dash yeah. M, HTM. Yeah. And we can disable float 128, of course. Uh, that, uh, uh, so, so it's really only the really big things that you're allowed to disable. 
and things like uh, disabling float and disabling factor is important for things like uh, OS kernels, which really, 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 really do not want those registers touched at all. And yeah. That said, with all that though, the, the way we handle the M options though could use some cleanup. Because sometimes you, you will see, at least in the test suite, dash M CPU equal power seven and then yeah. dash M power nine vector or something. It's, Right. You get some wild things like that. And then uh, are you how, gonna, are how, you, are you, no, I'm not Are you volunteering for now I for cleaning just, up the test? I was, I was preempting that. No, I'm not. Yeah. Maybe the built-in structure stuff, but I don't know. It's only David that can cop out that way by saying, are you volunteering? <laughs> right. So, so last year I added, uh, I think, that, no, that was early this year, uh, and that was actually fix later but I don't know by who yeah, I, I was going to also say in terms of the options we've all recognized that we really need to redo it but of course no one ever wants to do it yeah we have too many options right and you shouldn't use them so we should actually disable whatever we can right uh, yeah, and you know and obviously for debugging you want to be able to have them while you're doing the development but right. you know Quote 128, as you mentioned, is, is one thing we have to start thinking about in terms of when we switch, well, switch the phone. Ideally, we would uh, uh, allow float 128 on all hardware, and not, not even only all PowerPC hardware, but just all hardware. Just run it through some uh, emulated whatever. I don't care what speed it is, just so that it works, right? The problem is, on power at least, if you, because of big endian, if you have this and you act, compile your module with Power 5, mm -hmm. you'd have to pass the thing in GPR registers rather than the vector yes, absolutely. because you don't have... a memory but, even. Right, yes. but then you couldn't intermix code that was compiled with Power 7. At, I originally, when I did yes. the, the 128 yes. stuff, had it doing that, and it was just too hard to actually talk about and document. Yeah. So, I mean, we can go back to looking at doing that. It's just... I don't. I don't see us moving forward any soon without it. Uh, it uh, 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 all 32 bit power PC would have to be essentially gone before we can. Uh, yeah. So, so what you're talking about is basically um, a VSX AVI for non VSX no, no, machines. No, 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 no. Because no. that's how you do the soft no, float, no. right? I'm saying use uh, float 128 soft float by default for one uh, for for long double. Right, but the soft version of that currently requires VSX hardware. Right, right. There is no soft version for a uh, system without VSX, yeah. Right. So, but, we so you're now version. talking about a soft version for all of PowerPC, including uh, things without VSX. For all VSX. architectures, actually. For all architectures. Yes. So just quad processor float emulators. There, there was... Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, there was originally, if you compiled the VSX... V, v, X, the one of the embedded PowerPC ports, you could actually get software float 128 and passing it in GPRs. Yeah. Uh, as far as I could tell, no one actually did that, and you actually had to you do special configure options. I mean, that's if what, if we want to do it, we could. We, it's just hard to. Somebody has to sit down and uh, define it as ABI. It's kind of ABI. It's already. Uh, 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 is using existing ABI if you say pass everything in registers or in memory, whatever the way structs are passed, whatever. Right. To be clear, there's no objection from my point of view, no, so I long know, as I know, we have know. a, you know, know. a def uh, definition. I'm, I'm, by the way, not promising to do this anytime soon or doing this at all. It says what I think should be done in the future. <laughs> so there's lots of people here who can do it, so maybe. Okay, so let's find more people. Yeah, uh, so there's David, and David is not here. Uh, uh, he, he did uh, uh, lots of maintainer work that you guys didn't see, and he did uh, all kinds of AAX stuff as well. There, was, there were quite a few AAX passes, passes late last year, I don't know why. Yeah, maybe so, maybe someone just tested it late last year. 
Yeah. Yeah, that could be it. Okay, then we have Ian, who did way much for Darwin. It's incredible. It's, I don't know how many patches you did. It's I'm going to admit that it's cheating, right? Because basically, um, Darwin hasn't been getting much attention for several years. And therefore, um, I had a huge backlog of patches. So um, I've kind of been applying almost the same patch set, first to trunk, and then to eight, and then to seven. <laughs> right, so, and then nine, eight, seven. So um, it looks like I've done a lot of patches, but it's actually the same patches several times. <laughs> oh, I only, looked, I only looked at trunk, actually. <laughs> uh, so it's in pretty good shape now, I think. It's, yeah, yeah well, it's, this is great, man. I have this one problem, which is to do with the um, uh, the 64-bit DS mode. There's some hiccup somewhere in either the uh, the validation of those addresses or the way it's done. Um, I had some discussion with Alan on the PR about it, but we don't have a resolution for that. I figure if I get that one fixed, then Darwin's in pretty good shape. But what would be needed to fix it? Hours. Just time. Oh, right. You know, it's just Fixing having time to focus well. on it, yeah? Right, okay. you know, it's not my J job. Right. Uh, uh, so, uh, at IBM, we also have a new team now of uh, people in China who mostly work on the, uh, on the middle end. Could you introduce the people there? Or? Uh, hi, um, uh, I'm from China, and uh, we had a, a new team um, uh, in CDL team um, working on middle end. Um, two of my team members are um, transformed from their previous Excel compilers, and uh, they have strong experience uh, uh, on the back end um, for power target and uh, mm, I had some experience on the middle and uh, mm, and in the past year I mainly work on the LTO part uh, and uh, one of my patch uh, is for the PGO performance um, and uh, it uh, improved the um, spec test suit for one percent, and uh, another um, patch in is for um, uh, link uh, for LTL uh, link static library uh, with the IBM mass library. It uh, improves about nine percent performance. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so the last part you mentioned was the live uh, live mesh thing, right? Yeah, that was. Uh, uh, I don't I don't think we have a anyone else in the team who could have figured that out. So that, was, that was cool. Like, uh, there is it. Uh, 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 all the rest of the team mostly works on the on the back end, not on the middle end. So that that's true, right? Sort of. Yeah, that's pretty much the case. You know, at, at one time I tried to be a middle end guy, and then I got kind yeah. of pushed out of, of doing that kind of work. But, but you only do like gimbal stuff for power now. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm really happy with this this new team that we've got from China. They've been doing really good work, and uh, we're trying to contribute more to the middle end, uh, which is optimizations for everybody. Yeah. And uh, we we see that there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, for uh, for future improvements, so we're we're happy to, be, to have these guys on board, and uh, they went from knowing absolutely nothing about GCC a year ago to uh, having been very successful at working with the community. So I think it's uh, really a testament to to their capabilities and their hard work. So thanks, Shanghu. Uh, so so I have here as well. Uh, you, Carlos, and Lynn who I actually didn't find any patches from, but you guys worked on Go, so I don't actually see those patches in ConfigR6000. But I know that 
you guys did a lot of work, and I know that because I didn't see any of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not completely true, but yeah. Um, and then I have Mike, of course, who did most of the work, as always. <laughs> well, as you pointed out, I think we only have one pack of class here, you know, if you... Uh, that's not true. Uh, yeah, if you go all the way to yeah, last I, year. I go to September. To, yeah, yeah. To, then, to, then, then there's a lot more. But yeah, there were a lot of uh, I E E E one twenty eight yeah, yeah. patches. <laughs> and, uh, and and of course, I'm spamming your mailbox now with new newer patches. Yeah, yep. Which we don't talk about except the talk you did yeah. yesterday, right? Uh, uh, then there's uh, patches by Pat Hauken a lot, for, uh, mostly for scheduling. And Paul Clark, who isn't even on our team, uh, uh, did a lot of patches actually for the for the stuff uh, Steve Monroe did before, the MM Malaysia and headers. Those are uh, x86 headers, uh, which you can just include on PowerPC as well, and it will emulate all of the factor intrinsics. And it works pretty well. Uh, it's, of course, not as fast as, as it would be on an Intel, mm -hmm. but it works pretty well. Yeah, to clarify, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, do all of the x86 intrinsics, just up through the uh, SSE4 layer, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't do AVX. No AVX. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Let's not be crazy. And it doesn't work unless you have VSX. That's correct. It's, it's another anti-Darwin right, patch. Right, right. You, you need to be VSX. <laughs> But it actually does work on 32-bit, and it does work on big endium. Uh, so, so what instructions are you guys not emulating on x86 or can't right Sorry? now? What instructions are you not emulating or what you can't support uh, from the Intel side that you guys uh, are trying We don't to? emulate uh, instructions at all. Oh. We emulate the intrinsics at source level, so it's the same headers. So nothing to do with AVX. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. once you once you get up there, then the emulations are really inefficient. Yeah. Once you start getting to 256 and 512 bit vectors, and emulating that on 128, a permute doesn't look very clean. Uh, trying to do it that way, so there's not a whole lot of value. Uh, we're not we're not positioning this as something that's really um, for efficiency anyway. It's for portability. No. Well, it is, uh, but, for, but it is for, for efficiency. It's for porting efficiency. Porting efficiency, yes. right? But in terms of in terms of the code generation, for some of it, it's pretty good. But uh, for yeah. some of it, it's not. And uh, you know, in particular, when you've got vector scalar stuff, uh, we put our single scalar on one side of the red vector register, and uh, Intel puts it on the other side of the vector register. So if you're going to emulate that, you're going to end up with a lot of crud in there. Yeah. So. So pretty good means like maybe five or ten times slower, or maybe two times slower, or may maybe even faster. But that's probably not going to happen a lot. But it builds and it runs. It builds and it runs and it runs correctly. That's that's the difficult part. It's, it's uh, very useful for for uh, proof of concepts for things that have not yet been ported to power. So we've found good use for it. And then there's Peter, of course. Uh, uh, who did all kinds of Beantil stuff, of course, uh, but also register allocator. And the thing that I'm really happy with, which is generic actually, it's target set jump preserves non volatile reg B, which is like the longest uh, macro name we have. Tar don't, don't make me say that. <laughs> target set jump preserves non volatile oh, reg B. Set yeah. It's, it's pretty simple, actually. It says that uh, this, the target such an implementation uh, uh, has an ABI just like, like function call. That's all it says. So uh, 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 the compiler doesn't have to save all non-volatile registers over the function. Well, yeah, well, basically, basically they were without the, the thing, we were saving the world twice. Yes, yes. GCC would save it for you once, and then the glibc set jump call would again save it again. Yes, and, yes. And that one went unused. So most most ports were sane, and they had sane glibc set jump long jump uh, codes, so they didn't need the, the crappy GCC right. save the world stuff. So we 
disable that for it's, it's only one of I think one of the older risk ports, right? I don't even know which maybe I pushed it away. I think Spark was broken. Spark, um, huh? It's like who cares Spark, so but <laughs> yeah. But I, I set it up at least for the default hook to behave the way it was. So it was up to the other maintainers to go in and say we have a valid good set jump, long jump, and then we can use the the fast method. So right. how many have actually gone in there and changed their ports to to do it? I don't know. It's their problem, yeah. I guess. Does it de default to on? Instead of it defaults to the old to the old version. To yeah. the old version or so, the so old so behavior. Right, which so was GCC would save the world for you. Right, um, so all the new ports get that as well. Yeah. Yes. Might want to fix that, but swap it around. Like uh, set it in all backends manually, set it to on, right? And set it to all. That would, yeah, then I'd have to go and, and add hooks yeah, on all, yeah. uh, all the, the ports. But yeah. I might do that. Uh, I have to do something uh, at the airport for my trip back. <laughs> so. That's how I did the LR LRA things. So. So if you just ask Rainer Orth, is it that how you pronounce his name? He normally looks after the Spark oh. stuff. Yeah, I don't remember if it was Spark or or what. I was working with Jeff and some of the others. To so, get it so in, the Spark's part of Jeff's build farm, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but I think I think maybe Jeff mentioned that it was Spark that that was broken, and I think I saw some some comments in the code as well. Okay. But, uh, I, 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 Rain is pretty active, you know, if you ask him, he'll probably just fix it. Uh, so, so then there's Tulio, Tulio, you did a lot of float 128 stuff and it's still ongoing out here, out here right? So actually, uh, I didn't. <laughs> Gabriel oh, did? did more uh, oh, things. Uh, his patches are, <laughs> are flowy. Yeah, it's, still yeah. it's still going on. I still uh, have a long list of it, patches, and my patches especially, they are still pending. Uh, and there isn't anything the compiler needs to do right now, right? Yeah. Uh, then there's Bill, Bill Spit. So just an, another comment on that. You said uh -huh. the compiler doesn't have anything to do, but you know, we kind of got to the point where we had a bunch of lib standard C++ patches from Jonathan Wakely um, that are waiting to go in, but we kind of got stuck uh, because of needing the glibc fix. So that's why there hasn't been any activity on the C++ library uh, in the past, the runtime library. So we're still looking forward to trying to get that in as soon as we can, but uh, there's, we're going to have to work on rebasing those patches from a year ago at some point. I, th I think we still have uh, problems in the compiler for... Uh... We will definitely have problems when we change the default to make sure that Fortran yeah. builds. Fortran and ADA and, and, you know, C and C++ are probably good at this point, but... Uh, uh, we'll have problems if uh, uh, any compile uses two of the long double types, or of the 128-bit long double types. But we will need to do conversions and anything if we ever well, we, do we, we do, and they do use different names. Yeah, they have different names. Right, yeah. yeah. But the problem yeah. is, is in Fortran does not have the idea of two different 128-bit types that both right. C and C++ but have. But neither does TCC. So, yeah, so you only have one type, and you don't have the alternate IF mode or yeah. whatever. Uh, so. G GCC thinks that for every two floating point types, uh, one of the types, uh, uh, well, either the two types are identical. That can well, yeah, yeah, right. that's why it took uh, me three years to uh, get or, the first set of patches in. Or, or one of the types has a higher precision than the other, yeah. which is not true for uh, Q, uh, IEEE QP float, float versus double-double double float. Double-double right. double float has a much higher precision, much. It has 1,000 bits precision or something. No, no, it actually... For some values, it does. Yeah. That's what it has like is. three. It has like three bits for some some yeah. numbers. Yeah. So you're, you're saying, if we take two 
Fortran object files that were compiled at different times, one with the old long double and one with the yeah. new one, we're in trouble for those. Even if we have two C files compiled. Yeah. I mean, it, it is an ABI break, and, the, and right. the original intention was when a distro changes, it may be right. the time to do it. You know, I'm, I'm skeptical whether we can get all of our things. But, but when can we do that then? That's, because, that's the problem. Be, because you need at least VSX to have the uh, emulated thing even, right? which is Power 7. Uh, and for uh, to have the hardware, you need Power 9. Right, right. Uh, so, so, so we cannot switch over to the default before basically everyone has hardware like that. Yeah. Now, now for the li math libraries, we'll have both versions. So, yeah. so if you have a, a, if you have an application, and you call the library, you're fine with that. Uh, it's when you have a one function in one .o file calling a different ABI type in another object file that we, we you know, yeah. that we don't handle. Yeah, actually, we do handle it the, to some extent. The linker now says that you're calling between two modules with different ABIs, I believe. But if not, we need to check it and, and all that kind of stuff. But if these two files uh, handle long double values differently, then how can you make them talk to each other? So in GLBC, we're going to have support for the two formats with the symbol versioning, but that is not in yet. This is the, 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 the branch that I'm working on, and the, the, last branch, the, the last batch in the branch, which actually enables the these functions to be exported by LBM. This is this is not ready to be to be integrated yet. Yeah. But yeah. one of the, but sorry. Yeah. One, one of the main things that saves us most of the time is that not many people use long double. Not many programs use long double. But I have this suspicion that in Fortran it's actually used more often. So. Yeah. I I mean that that is what you know why you why Fortran is going to be the problem because they use long double. Yeah, yeah. They, they actually care about math. They care about right, floating right. point. That question. <laughs> but I, last cauldron at Manchester, I, I did talk to some of the Fortran people, and they think that most of their users do actually do not use long double of any form. That it's okay. mostly single and double that they okay. use, and vector versions, obviously. But, you know, there's always going to be the wild one. And, and you have the issue that it should be faster, but hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So we mentioned uh, the work that needs to be done in uh, GLibc, mm -hmm. uh, libstd C++, G Fortran, and we also need to change uh, libdfb. Uh, it, it still doesn't does not support float 128. And libbfd, you say? At decimal at DFB oh, decimal okay, floating okay, point. Okay, okay. And <laughs> I understood BFD. I thought <laughs> what? <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And uh, it's interesting because immediately uh, right before this uh, uh, buff, so you're saying libdfb doesn't do 128 bit. Uh, yes, on power. Uh, one, oh, 128 yeah. bit binary. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, uh, so we still have to implement that. And probably supporting both types, and uh, we have an agreement. Uh, we just had this agreement in the buff uh, before this one, where we would merge libdfb into glibc after making some changes. And I mm -hmm. suspect this would be one of the requirements. I think your suspicion is correct. Uh, it depends on the size of the list. <laughs> So more, so more happy things, yay. Like I said, we're going to remove the R64 scheduling because it's large, right? And I'm also going to remove the Titan scheduling because no one knows what Titan is and no one has ever touched the Titan. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, 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 we, we now generate a dot .machine in the assembler files, always. If we would ever do it, we always do it now. Uh, instead of optimizing it away, like, oh no, we default to, I don't know, power nine anyway, so we don't need the dot machine. Yeah, just just put the text in, it's it's a few bytes. And uh, 
uh, the actual assembler uh, doesn't do anything if it's uh, if it's a default. It doesn't do, do anything. So. Well, Alan, Alan checked that. So. Uh, oh, uh, 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 using dot machine is kind of expensive in the assembler because it has to change all tables and stuff. It doesn't have to do it if it's a default. Yeah, yeah. You looked and it, it isn't. Okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so, uh, we now use some uh, uh, parameterized names in the machine description with the add sign. It it means that uh, it works for any mode, so you don't need a di different name for a different mode, which is nice. So it's, so you don't need to uh, uh, add si3 and uh, add di3 uh, and stuff. Well, well, you you uh, you already didn't need it uh, uh, to put it in the machine description like it. You can just use uh, iterator, right? Uh, but uh, uh, if you then want to call a uh, gen at something, you need to call both of them with a if this mode, else that mode, whatever. And now you can just call it call it uh, as gen with that part uh, left out, with the mode left out, and put the mode as an actual argument, which is nice. Hmm? In C code, it is nice. Yeah, this is all over in my mem compare, string compare stuff because I want ah. an SI mode or a DI mode version of something. Ah, ah, ah. And so, I, you know, it's like if it's SI, then call this function. If it's DI, call that function. And not having to right. do that would clean a lot of things up. I only looked at this in, uh, in the MD files itself. MD files would sometimes... Uh, well, MD files that generate more instructions would call other patterns, right? Uh, so, so I got rid of all that. But uh, yes, in 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 the string thingy, right? R six thousand string is called. Uh, yes, probably. Uh, should I look at it? Or will you look at it? Or? Cool. There, there was also some code, and if it was the swap optimizer or something. Uh, where, or it was something that Kelvin, I think, was working on, was some type of optimization where he was, was it alignment or, yeah, something where it was a big if statement, if this, then we do this mm -hmm. DI version of the SI version, and then you right. go down, and then, but it was like 50 Look. lines long of these different yeah. patterns that all had, it was only different by this, so I, I okay. nuked it by half, and then just called an expander, and then the expander checked right. the thing, but, so you should, we should look in there. I'll look in there. Right. There's probably some expanders we can eliminate right. uh, by uh, by using this this method. The, I, I don't know what to call it. Uh, officially, the name is. I wrote it down so I know it. It's parameterized names. That's the official name. But I call it add stuff or add names, right? Because you write them with just the add sign. And then do you put the mode at the first option? Uh, there's or? multiple ways to do it, actually. But you put mode as first argument. Okay. First argument? Yeah. yeah. OK. Uh, and then it shifts it's, all it's, the it's arguments flexible. down? It is documented. It's generic. It's not PowerPC. It's generic. Okay. It's, it's pretty nice. I thought like uh, uh, we would have uh, more places to use it uh, than we did. We only had like 10, 20, whatever. Well, uh, as but Aaron and I are saying, more, there is so more. We just I, didn't I know just about. I just didn't look well enough. Yeah. yeah. Another ten or twenty just in R six thousand string. Right. It's still nice to use. Uh, we also use the generic enabled attribute now. Yeah. So you can say which uh, alternatives of an of an instruction are enabled for uh, uh, what instruction set to use. So currently we support. P6, P7, P8, P7 vector, I think, P8 vector, P9, something like that. And so so you just say in uh, in another art attribute, uh, which is called ISA, you, uh, in the instruction you say ISA is uh, this or that or that or that or that for all those alternatives. I can just say star, which means everywhere. Uh, and then uh, 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 that alternative is only enabled if you're compiling for that CPU or higher. Uh, 
this is used on multiple architectures, so we won't have any special bugs with it, hopefully. Yeah, and it, it is quite useful, um, and presumably it speeds up the compiler. I was going to say I'm in not the sure about that, but yeah. yeah, in the in the previous dis discussion, uh, there are funny places in 128-bit floating point that you can't really use the at sign because yeah. um, it has to deal with TF mode being either port 128 or right, IBM right, double double, right. or, uh, and you don't have one of the functions, so you can't can't just use the simple the iterator name or the at sign name. Right. The enabled thing also does the uh, TF thing, uh, but it does TF and KF separately. Uh, okay. It's not very nice. I didn't. I didn't know it did the TF thing. I didn't know it did the TF thing. Yeah, it does. It, but it, it makes the code a lot smaller. That's the main reason it does that. It doesn't really belong there. I think in ISA field. I don't know. Uh, oh, what I did early this year. I remembered the registers. I wanted to do this since forever. So uh, uh, we have a lot of registers, uh, 100 something registers, and uh, they have really strange numbers. Like I know, I know that the condition registers were 68 until 75. Why are the condition registers built numbered 68 to 75? I know that s register number 64 does not exist. Well, it was the MQ register. It's MQ register, yes. <laughs> And what is LR? Uh, uh, what numbers did the uh, Altitrack registers have? Right. Well, and one of the problems, in fact, with the future machine was we wanted even an odd registers for the. For ah, and yeah. so I had to test, you know, is it a yeah. GPR register? Then do this and, and yeah. floating point. The it Altifec did make it simpler. The Altitrack registers started at 109 or something. So, so the even artifact registers had odd numbers in GCC and stuff. Now we have uh, uh, integer registers, GPRs are 0 to 31. They have the float registers as before. Uh, and both of those cannot really be changed because uh, lots of things hard code like 0 is 0. And uh, floating points, some things actually do as well. Uh, so here. Uh, we're a couple minutes over, so if you oh, want to wrap up. Oh, okay. Up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, all, I'm almost done. Uh, all the rest can be changed now. So we can change it at will. And we have uh, uh, integer, float, vector in order. Uh, and then four, four, four extra things. And then you get the CR fields, which are just 100 to 107 now. Wow. And we also have. Uh, this makes the generate the code look nicer. The reason is to make uh, uh, to make better code uh, in the reg alloc order array, which shouldn't actually matter for uh, generating faster code. Uh, uh, we do CR zero before all the other CR field. We used to do it as one of the later ones because uh, lots of things want to use it for something else, right? For dot instructions. But you, you actually get a lot better code if you put it first in that array. I don't know why, but I put it first. And now we generate it like 98% of the time or something. So. And I don't think we have any plans for this year. Other than just some cleanups and stuff that we might have talked about yesterday. Right? Yeah. Any questions? Does anyone want to discuss anything still? Nothing? Thank, thanks, everyone, for being here. <laughs>